It's a pleasure to be here and I think that Art Lovers Getaway is a fabulous tool. I'm really excited about this, Stuart. <laughs> It goes way, way back, as, as long ago as I can remember. I grew up in Montreal, and in my family, I was one of six children. I was a middle girl, um, but my father had an amazing love for classical music, and growing up, uh, he always had the stereo turned up, he always played the piano, and I just floated through, that's my recollection of my childhood, floated through life with amazing classical music and danced and I just found myself living in another world. Uh, coupled with that, my grandmother and my aunt were quite accomplished artists in Montreal and so you can imagine in the 50s um, what that was like to see women that were actually accomplishing some very wonderful um, art um, and it was it was more of a hobby kind of thing but they did have exhibitions and as a young girl I went to every exhibition I could I just was enthralled with amazing art and um, I remember as a very very little girl uh, being dressed up in a red velvet dress, my mother taking me into Montreal to meet my grandmother and my grandmother's art group and I was their subject, I was their model and so for a day I got to um, sit in a room with all these women, these grand dames all standing with easels and oils and I was their subject and it was quite the recollection is just so very clear. I was just in awe that they could paint me and then every once in a while they'd let me get up from my big platform where I was sitting and walk around and see the paintings that they were doing and here I was walking through a forest or sitting on a chair. And I had all these, they had all these different venues behind me but I was always in this red velvet dress and I think that was what it was. Um, that, that early foundation. And then growing up in Montreal, it's an amazing cultural city. Uh, I frequented the museums. I was just between the music. I took dance, I took theater. Um, and it was uh, always expected that that's what I did and I loved it, which was interesting because others in the family didn't. Um, my father was in the engineering science side and so it was never seen as something that one did to earn a living. Um, so throughout my year into my adolescence I did a lot of sketching. It was, it was just a refuge that I always had and uh, music and dance were always part of that. I had a chance um, to go to Europe and I spent a year there and I went to the Sorbonne. Um, I enrolled in a, a course that was really for foreign students, but I loved it because in downtown Paris it meant I was alone in the city with these amazing galleries and so that's what I did. I just, I certainly enjoyed the Sorbonne and the amazing lectures that I got, but boy, my spare time, my fondest recollections were visiting all these amazing museums and, um, and sketching and painting and, and I never thought I was going to create a life out of it. I always just thought it was something that I did that was like my other side. Um, it wasn't until we moved to Salt Spring uh, 20 years ago that I picked up the art. Actually, if we backtrack a little bit, we took our family, our young family of two daughters, and we went and lived in Europe for a year. It was a dream we'd always had, and so we decided we're going to just do it. We took our family, we rented an old farmhouse in the south of France. I had my sketchbooks. Um, our daughters were in, you know, 10 and 8 years old, and they had their sketchbooks. And so wherever we went, number one, we went to all the museums, and two, we, we always had sketchbooks, and the girls and I always just did our sketching and and talked about the architecture, how the lilt of the land, uh, the colors, the textures. It was just, it was wonderful to bring this into the family. And after a year of living in the Provence area, a very rural little village, 
Um, we came back to Canada and set up on Salt Spring 20 years ago. And um, I pulled out all my sketchbooks and said, okay, what am I gonna do here? Dewart said, well, I'm building a house. And I said, well, God, I've just enjoyed my art side of myself. Our daughters were in their late elementary times at this point, um, so needing a little less of my time. And I decided to take my art to this farmer's market, the Saturday market in Ganges. And wow, I sold pieces. And so it, it launched. That's the beginning. From there, I went to a, oh so many shows. And I just kept painting. And Duart helped to put my work into a business that I could actually sell my work and um, make a little bit of money on it and um, it just it just grew from there just in, le in amazing just this huge incremental leaps in 20 years so anyways it came with a passion I think art is incredibly important and whether it is painting art, whether it's sculptural art, whether it is the art in creative cooking, the art in gardening, in understanding plants, the art in healing. Um, I think that if we can take that dynamics of the everyday and turn it into a creative, intuitive process, number one, I think our hearts sing. I think that we, we've, we become attuned to not only this very everyday world, yeah, but we become in tune with so much more. And I think that's when we start to see what they call the oneness. Um, and that to me is what happens when you go into your art, you go into your creative. And so I think that everybody has that capacity to go into that creative part, that that side that you are, that time stands still, you're lost in it. Um, it is incredibly important that young children be, inter be allowed. You know what, they're already there. This Maria Montessori talked about that. You allow the child when they're in that moment to keep experience, you don't interrupt that child. You, you let them keep being absorbed in, whether it's putting blocks together or whether it's drawing or digging in dirt, you allow that to happen because that's when they're in the creative flow. And it's only when we start to get into a being educated in outside schooling that we're disciplined and we're told to do an ABC and we start to lose, we start to disrespect this amazing flow. And I think that our I think that we're we're changing, we're starting to recognize, but I think there's so much more we could do in the education system. There's so much more we can do in the family to foster this dream place, this creative opening. And I think that when we are in those places that I think that's when, number one, we're the happiest, we're the most fulfilled, and we're living in the present, and we appreciate nature, we appreciate the wind, we appreciate the nighttime stars, we appreciate the wonderful animals. I mean, little kids, you see them digging in the dirt and they're just amazed. They're just so excited about this. They don't have to watch videos to get outside entertainment. We don't have to watch soap operas or movies that and see somebody else's life. We're living our own life. I think art is immensely important. And I think that right now our education system is doing a huge disservice because it's, it's doing a very great job of killing that. We need huge awareness in that, in the education system to bring that, to foster it, to let kids be the best that they can be. And rather than stripping funding, we need more people that are educated to understand the benefits of this. I think science is fantastic, the technology, but it is simply a tool. The real art comes from within each of us. It, it's, 
it's life. It's the stuff of life.